If you're visualizing yourself riding on a prison pony, aka the zebra, think again. Zebras resemble horses or ponies in so many aspects. However, although horses and donkeys have been effectively tamed, the zebra has remained mostly feral due to the inherent behavioral differences. So, how did the zebra dodge the destiny of its relatives, which included weight-bearing, agricultural labor, and fence jumping? Welcome to Animals Wow TV! Now that you've stumbled upon this video, you gotta take a look at this list of answers to the question, how hard is it to ride a zebra? Let's get started! When a wild tiger pony is in its natural habitat, we suggest y'all shall not interfere among them. A zebra, unlike a horse, is not a traveling companion. Most of you will surely be surprised by this, particularly those who believe that the zebra is too adorable to ride. In certain films, people are shown riding zebras. The reality is that colored horses were utilized in the film. Riding a zebra will surely jeopardize your life. Even a zoo zebra is not appropriate for horseback. A domesticated animal is accustomed to people and doesn't fear them. This is a positive characteristic since the animal won't worry about them through captivity. That's not the case with zebras. Zebras are terrified of people and tend to flee at great speeds. Animals with an innate dread of humans are nearly impossible to domesticate. The finest prospects for domestication are usually peaceful in temperament and the only thing you're going to be confident of is that they won't attack you when you respond to them or when you bring their meal. I think that's pretty exciting. We're unable to tame lions and zebras since they're really anxious creatures. In actuality, appeasing them will only make this situation harder. Zebras have a natural ducking response that makes lassoing them difficult. Yeehaw! Come on, little doggy, stop ducking. Let me tie you up real good. It's all fun and games until one good potent kick hits you. Zebras literally wake up every day and choose violence. Horses are graceful and you can see they're well behaved. That is diametrically opposed to zebras. Zebras are quite violent, very violent as far as I know. You couldn't possibly know what their next nefarious deed will be. That's what you'd anticipate from a rabid animal. If you're seeking the epitome of animosity, all you need now is a zebra. In fact, Many zebras exhibit this behavior as they mature. Rather than decelerating, they increase their hostility. It's risky for anyone to attempt to ride zebras for this fact alone. It'll almost certainly result in a bloodbath. There is another explanation for the zebra's ferocity. Lions are the predators on the African plains, and zebras provide sustenance for them. Zebras, as predicted, prefer to live as long as possible. As a result, zebras have evolved several protective measures over time. These are amazing processes that may be found in any animal. They have learned to be more than just hostile. They've also developed some of the most lethal strikes in the animal world. A single kick from a zebra contains enough energy to slay a full-grown lion. How much more do humans like us? Consider what happens to you if a zebra's kick can terminate the life of a magnificent lion. This occurred as a result of a powerful strike to the skull, resulting in death or serious injury due to brain damage. I think that's too much and it's awful. Another possibility is that the lion's jaw was broken by the vicious kick, rendering it incapable of eating until it died of starvation. This should help you realize how strong a zebra's kick can be. Not only that, but zebras have a terrifying propensity of nipping and clinging on. They dig their enormous fangs into the flesh and won't cut loose. Zebras are not only cruel to other living creatures, but they're also harsh to each other. Would you still dream of riding a zebra after learning all of these things? For me, I wouldn't even dare dream such things, no matter how tempting it looks to ride one. Well, that's solely based on my opinion. What about you? Something occurred in the 1980s that'll help you understand how severe this is. A herd of zebras was scheduled to be transported to a new place in Zimbabwe, a southern African country. The operator headed to the next location with a number of 16 zebras in a vehicle. By the time the driver arrived at the new location, all but one of the zebras had perished. They died as a result of the horrific strikes they had delivered on each other. Think about keeping a half a dozen zebras in a cage in your yard for a while. That's gonna be a total disaster. All of them are extremely barbaric, and they make it quite known that they are not your riding pals. 
Indeed, they always resort to violence all of their lives. Zebras are living proof that size and shape do really matter. Aside from what I've said earlier, the physique of a zebra is truly unsuitable for riding. They're significantly smaller and less robust than horses. Their backs and body shapes are likewise inappropriate for saddles or human riders. An average adult cannot ride a zebra because it's too petite. Many people are unaware of this since they only see zebras in photographs or films, including myself. These may not often provide an accurate representation of the true size of this animal. A few zebras have been domesticated here and there, although this is more of an oddity than a standard. Zebras' backs have not developed to the point where people can ride on them. Their backs aren't even good for bearing standard loads, not to mention people who weigh many kilograms. This fact implies that even if the zebra was a really charming creature, riding them would be unwise. I think by riding them, I might cause a great deal of suffering to the animal. There may be exceptions in very rare circumstances, such as with Walter Rothschild. It is possible to come across a zebra that is stronger than average and can accommodate a man on the saddle. But as I've said, that's a one-time occurrence. But crossbreeding might be a smart solution in order to ride a zebra. Now the question is, how? Well, the only answer I know, according to my research, is a zorse. A zorse is the product of a zebra stud and a mare horse pairing. The opposite combination is referred to as a hebra. Zorses are larger than zebras, have a gentler demeanor, and have more color variation. They are more commonly employed for horseback than zebras because they are simpler to deal with and larger. Now that makes sense. I think I'm gonna ride one in the future. Although they're normally only born in captivity, there have been a few isolated occurrences of them being raised in the wild. Domestication and genetic manipulation will surely have altered both the morphological and behavioral traits of the horse, which would have been more petite, harsher, and more like a zebra in its initial phase than today's horse. While horses perform tougher, dwell in more urbanized areas, and do their master's orders, they also enjoy calmer, more pleasant lifestyles. The horse was spared from extinction thanks to domestication. Domestication has certainly worked as a matter of survival for the world's 60 million horse population. Zebra populations, on the other hand, are likely to be less than 800,000, with humans providing the main threat to their existence. Given these facts, which would you choose to be? You see, I didn't just learn about the reasons why zebras can't be ridden. I also learned the major differences from their equity cousins. What are your thoughts regarding these facts? Would you want to see more features related to this video alone? If so, share what you think below. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, we really appreciate you making it up until the end of this video. Also, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. And while you're here, might want to check out the other animal videos that we have. Thanks, and see you in the next video.